Tonight, a moment in history. Australia's $370 billion submarine defence deal signed and sealed with warnings from China. New developments in the Joffa Corf child sex case. Victims pleas ignored. Police take action over a houseboat ordeal on the Murray River. 60 players launch landmark legal action against the AFL. A bank collapse triggers a wild ride on the share market, but there's some good news for families. And later, the surgery-free weight loss treatment, stripping kilos. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. Australia has locked into the biggest defence deal in our history, committing almost $370 billion to buy a fleet of American and British nuclear-powered submarines. It's prompted an immediate warning from China, describing it as a time bomb for peace in the region. Close allies about to get much closer, marching to the presidential beat. And with the might of the U.S. nuclear fleet as a backdrop... With the USS Missouri, can you hear us? The world is listening as Australia, the U.S. and Britain chart a common course as AUKUS. I'm proud to be your shipmates. The broad aim... ...of ensuring the Indo-Pacific remains free and open. But it took the British Prime Minister to admit the real reason... China's growing assertiveness. Just 18 months after Scott Morrison unveiled the concept, Anthony Albanese seals the deal. The biggest single investment in Australia's defence capability in all of our history. A multi-phase 30-year plan involving three submarine types, extending the diesel-powered Collins and adding nuclear-powered subs, three US Virginia class with the option of two more, and eight new AUKUS class built in Australia. The cost at least $268 billion, but warnings it could be $100 billion higher. We need to respond to this. A failure to do so would see us be condemned by history. The timeline from this year, more frequent US and UK sub visits to Australia from 2027, a permanent rotation of four Virginias and a UK astute class in Australian waters. Early 2030s, Australia buys three Virginias. Late 2030s, UK delivers the first AUKUS sub for its Navy. And the early 2040s, first Australian AUKUS sub is delivered, with one every three years until the late 2050s, allowing all three nations' submarines to operate together. This is really intended to um, secure the peace and stability of the region. And where all countries are able to act in their sovereign interests, free from coercion. It's likely all three of these leaders will be well gone from politics before the first AUKUS sub surfaces. But the deal they've done today will bind their militaries for generations. The biggest deal since World War II aimed at preventing World War III. The defence of our values depends, as it always has, on the quality of our relationships. And money. The first nine billion in next month's budget, six from the axed French subs deal, the other three cut from other defence programs, which is where the opposition's support for the project ends. We can't allow Labor to cannibalise the defence force to pay for AUKUS. Why do you choose Thank Australia you. as a partner Thank here? Thank you. Another $3 billion will be paid to the US and UK to develop their subs building capacity, while Australia is promising to honour its nuclear non-proliferation obligations. These subs are powered, not nuclear armed subs. They're nuclear powered, not nuclear armed. All nuclear material will be imported from the US and UK, but... We are making a commitment that we will dispose of the nuclear reactor on as yet unspecified defence land. It's an unusual name, Marcus. And China doesn't like the sound of it. The Global Times warning Australia's planting a time bomb for its own peace. But they are vowing to stick together, three as one under the AUKUS banner. It's going to be a game changer. And now it's definitely game on. In the United States, Mark Riley, 7 News. And Daniel Andrews is already lobbying for Victoria to be a major player in the delivery of the nuclear subs. The centre of advanced manufacturing in our nation is right here in Melbourne. 
and I would be staggered if there was not a pretty significant role for us to play in the supply chain, uh, particularly at the more advanced end of that uh, supply chain. The Premier says Victoria has a thriving defence tech industry. Prosecutors have ruled out an appeal in the Geoffrey Joffa Corf child sex case. Jody Lee is at the county court and Jody victims wanted an appeal after the Collingwood fan avoided jail, but the case is now officially closed. Mitch, this is a fresh blow for Joffa's victim, who was just 14 when he was sexually assaulted by the Collingwood superfan after the pair met online. Joffa, of course, has been free to live his life in Queensland after he was handed a 12-month suspended sentence for the sexual assault of a child under 16. His victim, Alex Case, pleaded with the DPP to appeal. He felt that because Joffa never served any time behind bars, he essentially got away with his crime. But today, the DPP quashed any hope of an appeal. In a statement, it says that a suspended sentence was considered the same as time served back in 2005 when the crime was committed. As such, the Court of Appeal is unlikely to uh, consider that sentence inadequate and it won't be appealed. Mitch? Jody Lee at the County Court, thank you. The AFL is facing a landmark concussion lawsuit with more than 60 former players joining forces to sue the league. They're chasing tens of millions of dollars in compensation as the AFL unveils a new plan to protect the stars of the game. Former footy hard man Max Rook is the face of a landmark court battle suing the AFL over concussion. Max has taken this decision incredibly seriously. He is really here to advocate on behalf of this group. In court documents, the Geelong Premiership star says he suffered up to 30 head knocks in his career, two that left him unconscious. These injuries have been completely life-altering. More than 60 former players are represented, in some cases seeking more than $2 million each. The case also includes families of deceased players. This is not about bringing down the AFL. This is about compensating these injured players. This compensation will come through insurance. If the case goes to trial, the former players will call evidence from experts in neurology. It comes on the same day the AFL launched its new concussion strategy, including $25 million for a long-term study of players' brains. And what we're hoping to do is get players from the time they enter our pathway at um, 16 or 17 years of age and have them in that study which will go all the way through their careers and post-career as well. The AFL will employ four full-time staff to focus on concussion. Any current player with symptoms faces a minimum of 12 days on the sidelines. There's certainly no, no pressure from a coach, from me as a coach, to, to try to get players back any more quickly. When I finish playing football and retire. I want to be able to enjoy time with my kids and, and um, yeah, hopefully everyone can do that. Emma O'Sullivan, 7 News. Two men have been charged after innocent women were targeted in a houseboat ordeal on the Murray River. Police took action as new claims emerged with the group of drunken men now accused of exposing themselves to children. Victoria Police have joined forces with their New South Wales counterparts to track down 12 suspects from the shock booze crews on the Murray. <laughs> Two of the drunk dozen have now been charged, accused of targeting nine women, ramming their boat and pelting them with glass bottles. Now further allegations have been made against the men. Paddleboat skipper Peter Garfield was a witness to the ugly behaviour. He says they exposed themselves to children on board his paddle steamer. Children did witness what was happening. I had one in the wheelhouse, a girl, and she saw it and, yeah, wasn't very really shocked. Two men boarded the houseboat against the wishes of the women before allegedly urinating on their property. Why would any woman come and holiday up there when this sort of thing goes on? We're still all a bit shaken up, but I think there was just no respect. It was just the most vile behaviour I've ever seen in my life, like throwing glass bottles at us when they knew there were pregnant people on board. New South Wales police are in the early stages of their investigation. They've taken a report from an owner of the Moama on Murray houseboats and were preparing to take a statement from one of the women who was on board the houseboat.
I mean, we see drunks on the river all the time, but usually they're, they're not as in that sort of situation where they're actually trying to aboard someone else's boat. Investigators believe several of the men are tourists from Ireland. Cameron Bow, 7 News. Five children have been caught up in a dangerous road rage attack in Melbourne's east that's left an innocent driver fighting for life. Cassie Zervos is in Juan Turner South with the latest. Cassie, two men have been charged over the violence that began on East Link. Well, Mitch, this road rage attack has left investigators appalled. Two men got into a fight and both had children on board as passengers. It started on the East Link before both cars got off on High Street. During the road rage attack, one of the cars hit a third vehicle, which rolled. The 52-year-old driver has been left with critical injuries. Four children were also taken to hospital with injuries, including a five-month-old baby. Police were quick to make arrests. Two men aged in their 40s were arrested at the scene and taken into custody. They have since been bailed to face court again on Thursday, where we may learn a little bit more about what sparked this violence. Mitch. Cassie Zervos at Juan Turner South. Thank you. A man has suffered life-threatening burns after getting into an argument with a neighbour. It's understood the man in his 60s was assaulted by another man at the property near Dalesford just before 10.30 this morning. He was flown to the Alfred Hospital in a critical condition. A 59-year-old was arrested at the scene and is being questioned. The Andrews government claims sweetheart deals with other states are stopping Victoria from recruiting thousands of nurses, teachers and police officers. It's taking on Canberra to demand a bigger share of GST funding, warning we're facing a jaw-dropping shortfall. The Treasurer has a GST hole in his budget and he wants Anthony Albanese to fix it. It quite frankly is a, a ridiculous distortion put in place by the previous Morrison government. In 2018, GST rules changed to help Western Australia. Since then, other states' economies have suffered through COVID. They're doing very well. We ought not to have to do badly in order for them to do well. But Victoria's fight might not just be with the Prime Minister. We will obviously uh, use every weapon at our disposal to protect our fair share of GST. Thanks very, very much. much. To make the current GST deal fair, Victoria gets a $1.4 billion top-up each year, but that expires in 2027, leaving a budget bomb in the state treasurer's budget, money that could be used to hire more teachers and nurses. Victorian patients, Victorian students, Victorian workers and their families will not pay for WA to be better off. We just won't. The Productivity Commission will review the GST system by 2026, but as Victoria's debt continues to grow, the Treasurer has warned the state can't afford to wait that long. This is a uh, time bomb, if you like, that's been sitting on the budget papers now for some time. And it's at five minutes to midnight that Tim Pallas raises the alarm. Well, he should have been focused on his job. Chanel Vella, 7 News. Police are investigating a suspicious fire that engulfed a home in Melbourne's southeast. Fire crews were called to the Springvale property just after midday to find smoke billowing from the roof and solar panels. The blaze was so intense it sparked a smoke warning for suburbs in the surrounding area. It took firefighters an hour to bring the blaze under control. No one was injured. America's unfolding bank crisis is having an impact here with Australia's share market taking a battering today. Consumer confidence is plummeting, but that could put the brakes on rising interest rates. In the US, customers were lining up early outside their failed banks. It was quite nerve-wracking. Feel free to transact business as usual. It's just a little, we asked for a little bit of time. Trying to calm the queue while President Biden was calming the country. Americans can have confidence 
that the banking system is safe. But financial fears had already spread. Markets are still digesting this news and it's a reason why we've had most markets globally under pressure. Australia's market diving on opening, falling around 2% in the first hour before a slight recovery as the day went on. The plunge taking it back to where it was at the start of the year, wiping out 10 weeks of gains. Banks among those hardest hit, among the big four only the Commonwealth ended higher. Back in early February our market almost hit a record high and we've just fallen from those levels since. Today's dive into the red could have a silver lining for mortgage holders. With market predictions it'll help encourage the Reserve Bank to hit pause on interest rate rises. The latest measure of consumer sentiment extremely weak at a near historic low for a second month not seen since the early 90s recession. People saying it's time to buy a major household item the lowest it's been since 1974. Very very low consumer confidence does signal economic pain. The Reserve Bank is likely to pause raising the interest rates very soon. Paul Caddack, 7 News. Two hikers lost on Mount Buller have been found alive and well after a 10-hour high country ordeal. The couple from Adelaide raised the alarm late on Sunday and spent the night stranded in the wilderness. The police air wing located the duo just after 10am today. They've been checked by paramedics and are doing well. The MCG surface has been given the tick of approval after its turf was torn up and repaired in under two weeks. As nerves ease inside the ground, Metro staff are on edge as they prepare for a record-breaking AFL season start. For the Richmond station master, a fanatical tiger... Oh, my God. Are you serious? A surprise oh, visit from defender oh, Liam Baker yeah, and CEO Brendan Gale. Lovely to meet you. Man. Got stars in my eyes. Her job to transport the Tiger Army. The pressure is on, but you know, nothing that we can't do. That accessibility is a big part of who we are. The Richmond Station is a big part of who we are. The station's practice match, Ed Sheeran's concert, almost 600,000 bikey touch-ons that day, the highest daily total in three years. That was a great pre-season for us. Now, 395,000 expected for Melbourne's round one games, 117 extra services. When I see so many fans, it's like MCG is at Richmond Station. The MCG grass successfully relayed after the Sheeran concert. When you're dealing with turf, you do get a little nervous, but um, look, we're ready to go, and I think the proof's now in the pudding. We can all see it. There's hardly a blade of grass out of place. And in the build-up, the station master now sounds like a footy coach. Our staff take one day at a time. Every second counts. Our teamwork is their dream work. So go to Tigers. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Tim Watson is here now with a look ahead to sport and Tim it's set to be a fiery opening round. It is Mitch there's some bad blood brewing ahead of Friday night. We'll speak with both the Pies and Cats to find out the real reason emotions could spill over. The Tigers legend sends a warning to the rest of the comp while Chris Judd has high hopes for his Blues and a new chapter in the storied history between the Hawks and Bombers. I'll see you again soon. Okay Tim thanks very much. Bikies walk free over an ambush in Melbourne's northeastern suburbs. The details are next on 7 News. Also coming up, another nursing mother ejected from a courtroom in a breastfeeding backlash. See why a Ligon Street tram stunt is being slammed. The rising festival set to soar in Melbourne. Later, the new clues to understanding what causes endometriosis. And fog is likely to envelop Melbourne by the morning. I'll have the full outlook later in 7 News. More than 20 million passengers have travelled through Melbourne airport since July. The post-pandemic recovery continues, with more than 2 million travellers in February alone, both domestic and international. That's 80% of pre-COVID travel. India, New Zealand, China and the UK make up the highest number of overseas arrivals. 
Drivers on the Monash had a confronting start to their morning commute after a hot air balloon had to land nearby. The balloon appeared to be heading straight for the freeway during the morning peak. It eventually made an unexpected but safe landing in Parkland, just metres from the busy road. A second breastfeeding woman has been kicked out of a court hearing after a judge declared her baby would be a distraction. She joined protesters on the steps of the county court, raising awareness about women's rights. Taking a public stand on the steps of the county court, these mothers are on a mission. Breastfeeding is protected by law under the Equal Opportunity Act of 2010. So wherever mother and baby can be together, they can actually breastfeed together. A woman was kicked out of a trial last week on the basis her breastfeeding would distract the jury. If that had been me in the first few weeks of having Tilly, um, I would be you know, absolutely heartbroken. Outraged, Peter Brunnell took baby Tilly into a courtroom this morning in protest. It was a little unsettled, so I put her to the breast and I was kicked out of the courtroom. The judge blamed the crying, saying this unsettled baby is going to present a distraction to the jury and that is unfair on them, on the accused and on the prosecution. The World Health Organisation recommends babies are breastfed until at least two years old, but only 5% of Australian children are. Anti-discrimination laws were brought in to tackle our low breastfeeding rates, but judges are immune from civil liability. So many mothers every day are ashamed for doing this. And it's actually not even just breastfeeding mothers. Formula mothers are shamed as well for the way they feed their babies. And it's got to stop. Christy Cooper, 7 News. King Charles has broken from his mother's tradition to deliver an in-person speech to mark his first Commonwealth Day as monarch. In succeeding Her Majesty as head of the Commonwealth, I draw great strength from her example, together with all that I have learnt from the extraordinary people I have met throughout the Commonwealth. Anti-monarchy protesters gathered outside Westminster Abbey while admitting they never would have heckled the late Queen. Melbourne's Rising Festival is back for a second year as organisers look to make it a winter tradition. The After Dark Extravaganza is set to light up the city this June with shows and events designed for every age and budget. Creative, chaotic and up at all hours of the night, Rising Festival is as Melbourne as it gets. This year, offering 185 arts and music events scattered across the city's landmarks and secret spaces. Because it's edgy, because it's unique and bespoke, that's what makes it Melbourne. It does, it's not vanilla. There's nothing vanilla about uh, arts in Melbourne. The winter celebration replaces White Night on an epic scale. There's a giant ice skating rink at Birrarung Ma, free light shows over Fed Square and the chance to pick up one of 10,000 biodegradable kazoos to take part in the world's largest orchestra. Mass participation is something that we're really focused on. We want people to um, come at this festival as something that you do, not just bear witness to. The events will hug Flinders Street Station more closely this year to make the festival easier to navigate and ensure a buzz in the city on the chillier nights. The festival's hub will be situated here in the car park behind St Paul's Cathedral. It'll be transformed with DJs, barbecues and giant cocktail tanks. The perfect place to start your night. Rising runs for 12 nights starting June 7. Beth and Yeoman, 7 News. Commuters were in for a shock when two young men chased after a tram and leapt on. The stunt was filmed on Ligon Street last night. Yarra trams slammed the behaviour as dangerous and foolish, with the youths risking serious injury if they fell off. There's a backlash over a bin tax in Yarra. Rochelle Brown has details. Mitch, it's a hot topic and it's about to come to a head. I'll have the latest live from Richmond next on 7 News. Also coming up, setting the pace in the Burnley Tunnel. Why a violent shooting in Melbourne's northeast remains a mystery. And a new insight into how long COVID impacts on our brains and new hope of dealing with it.
Two bikies accused of gunning down a rival gang member have walked free from court. A jury found Fink's members, Sione Hokofonu and Poiva Sita, not guilty of attempted murder. A third man, Joseph Opapo, the alleged getaway driver, was also cleared. Security video showed the gunman opening fire on a Mongols bikie member as he sat in a car outside a Bandura sports bar three years ago. Their lawyers had argued a key witness was a liar. New pacemaker lights have been switched on in the Burnley Tunnel. They're designed to encourage drivers to maintain their speed, particularly on the spe steep incline out of the tunnel. Transurban hopes the high-tech system will reduce congestion at one of the road network's worst bottlenecks. Angry locals are taking on Yarra Council over plans to enforce a new bin tax. Rochelle Brown is covering tonight's meeting and Rochelle, residents have had enough. Mitch, hundreds of residents are taking matters into their own hands, rallying against what they say is simply a cash grab. If the motion is passed, they will be slugged with an additional fee of up to $115 to have their bins collected. Residents fear the charge will be listed outside the rate cap, allowing for unchecked increases in the future. The vote is expected to come down to the wire at tonight's council meeting. It's a battle residents fought and won when they kicked up a stink seven years ago. Now a bin tax is back on the table. You pay your rates and you expect to get basic council services from them. It's a cash grab. It's a sneaky way for the council to get around rate capping. Yarra Council wants to scrap waste services from the General Rates Bill, issuing a separate waste service charge instead. If passed, it will cost ratepayers up to $115 extra on top of their already rising rates. This will be like a, a weight around the neck of any councillor who votes the wrong way tonight come the election next year. Council says it's not considering the introduction of a new tax and listing general waste as a separate line item will allow them to be more transparent. If it's not a tax and if it's not uh, a levy or whatever description you want to call it, make it revenue neutral so that you don't collect any more from the residents. Rochelle Brown, 7 News. Pet owners in Melbourne's inner north have been hit with fines for overdue animal registrations, even though they claim it's unfair. Marybeck City Council fined ratepayers a total of $600,000, but hundreds of pet owners say their initial email notice to pay their animal rego was blocked by spam filters, so they never saw it. They were fined, then $370 for a late payment many have appealed without success. The International Criminal Court is set to formally issue arrest warrants for several Russians over the invasion of Ukraine. There are reports the court's chief prosecutor is seeking charges relating to Russia's forcible deportation of children from Ukraine and for targeting civilian infrastructure. And a suspected gas explosion in southwest Wales has killed a man and destroyed two homes. Three other people are in hospital. Many other houses in the street were damaged as well. Crews were called to the scene immediately after the blast to fix a gas main. A world first study has found long COVID can impact the brain in a similar way to chronic fatigue syndrome. Australian researchers say it provides hope for identifying potential new treatments. Sufferers call it an invisible illness endured behind closed doors. I just never really got, got better. Um, I had to stop working in August. Uh, and I'm still not back at work now. Now, a world first study is giving us a clearer picture why. High powered MRI scans found similar damage to receptors on brain cells in patients with long COVID and those with chronic fatigue. Damage that fails to let enough calcium in. So, with the drugs that we are using, allows to open that channels and pass calcium into the cell so that the cell can function properly. Between 5 and 10% of Australian adults have COVID symptoms that last longer than three months. Long COVID can cause brain fog, fatigue, pain and breathing difficulties. Words stopped making sense for a period of time. I couldn't remember how to make dinner. 
It's hoped the ability to capture such crisp images of the brain might uncover changes that have gone undetected in other MRIs and unlock some of the mysteries into both long COVID and chronic fatigue. And provide a pathway for new treatment options. We've been looking at the potential therapeutic benefit of low-dose naltrexone for ME-CFS and have been extending that knowledge to long COVID. A bigger clinical study is next. Katrina Blowers, 7 News. A driving lesson has taken a destructive turn for an L-plater in Melbourne's southeast. That's next on 7 News. Also coming up, getting to the bottom of what causes endometriosis. How burglars were spooked in an early morning raid. And just before the weather, weight loss without surgery, shedding up to 15% of body weight. A learner driver's second lesson behind the wheel has ended badly in Melbourne southeast. The female learner turned too sharply at the Murrumbina intersection, panicked and lost control. She mounted the curb, crashing into an old shop front. Authorities say the building was structurally compromised. No one was injured. A smoke alarm has scared off would-be thieves after they smashed their way into a tobacco shop in Melbourne's southeast. It happened just after midnight at Lynbrook. Police say the burglars fled the scene in a silver hatchback. Time now for a look at the markets with finance editor Gemma Acton. And Gemma, another steep sell-off today. Indeed, the ASX 200 is now at its lowest point since early January, just a whisker above 7,000 points. Banks were in the firing line again, but they did hold up better than technology and energy shares. Bitcoin has rebounded to a 10-day high. That's after the US government stepped in to protect depositors at failed lender Silicon Valley Bank, while global jitters have pushed gold back above 1,900 US dollars. And when the yellow line here rises, it indicates more consumers are expecting the jobless rate to increase this year. After moving sharply higher last month, the line's just gone up again, showing job security concerns are mounting. Gemma Acton reporting. Researchers have uncovered dozens of additional genetic risk factors associated with endometriosis. It's hoped the findings will shed new light on the disease and lead to better treatments. Endometriosis affects one in nine women, including Laura Terry. Had debilitating pain that I was unable to walk. Um, and it was a clear indication something more extreme was wrong. Still, doctors didn't suspect endometriosis until an accidental find during emergency surgery. The disease presents very differently for different women and, and that makes understanding it more difficult. But Queensland researchers are trying to find out. In the biggest study of its kind in the world involving 760,000 women, researchers uncovered 42 genetic risk factors linked with endometriosis. That's about a threefold increase from previous studies. Finding a genetic link between the disease and migraines, chronic pain, arthritis and asthma. It's an indication that there might be common underlying causes of different sorts of pain and the pain associated with endometriosis. Which could lead to more treatments targeting pain instead of hormones. Researchers hope their work will lead to faster diagnosis for endometriosis sufferers. Right now it takes around 8 to 10 years. Because you can't see it on a scan, you can't see it on blood work. Knowing that there's indicators out there that can show the full picture, not just what looks on the surface. Gives sufferers peace of mind. Georgie Chumley, 7 News. Sport is next with Tim Watson and Tim, a Blues champion, has high hopes for his former side. He does, Mitch. He's tipped them for final success this season. We'll hear from him next. Also, some key Tigers put through their paces with a club legend going into bat for Jack Revolt. How the Cats are bracing for a fired-up Collingwood on Friday night. Why Sam Mitchell has given his Hawks a licence to let loose against the Bombers. And the Aussies already eyeing off redemption against India. Welcome back. The bad blood between Collingwood and Geelong is set to boil over in front of a sellout crowd on Friday night. The Magpies are seeking redemption for last year's finals loss with a pie turned cat set to have a target on his back. 
A hot tip for Friday night, straight from the horse's mouth. And a sign of what's to come at the G. That's all good jest and that's why fans rock up to the footy, isn't it? Tensions have been brewing. Former pie Ollie Henry has a target on his back. There's a bit of bad blood there in a way and they're always good and then obviously someone's left Collingwood to go there, so... Maybe a push and shove here and there might, uh, might throw him off his game, but we'll see how we go. But the Cats are intent on drowning out the noise. We'll get around him for sure, um, but we, we want him to just you know stay focused and, and play his role within the team. The Cats are through to a prelim! Last year's heartbreak has added fuel to the fire. The Pies adamant they can go the distance with a message for their critics. Uh, stuff them, I reckon. Ideally not like to have as many close games as you can, but that experience that we've had last year is only going to help us in the long run. Tom Hawkins is still a watch and wait, and dad-to-be Jeremy Cameron is bracing for a game day curveball. If nothing changes, then I'll go to the G and, and, and pull the boots on, and um, if, they, if the call comes at sort of half time, then that'll be a decision that has to be made then. The fight for five flags days away for last year's Norm Smith medalist. It would be lovely, but there's a long year ahead. Uh, but, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be complaining if that happened. Laura Spurway, 7 News. Richmond champion Matthew Richardson has a message to critics wanting to write Jack Revolt off. The Tigers and Blues are all set for a blockbuster start to the season, while a footy legend has high hopes for Carlton. A slightly nervous wait, but a Richmond thumbs up for the final ground inspection before a date with Carlton in front of 85,000 fans. Dion Prestia to be there after overcoming his pec injury. Jaden Short bolting into contention, ticking off today's training off his calf strain. It's a good sign if uh, any player to get through a main session, so um, I'm not 100% sure. If he pulls that well, I... Uh, I um, assume he's going to play. Jack Graham and Jack Ross also up for selection. Lynch himself primed after pre-season foot surgery. Obviously time was getting away from me a bit, but then it sort of turned a corner pretty quickly. Two goal-kicking greats getting a first-hand training glimpse of Lynch's partnership with Revolt. The 34-year-old tipped to stay a key focus in the Tigers' premiership push. Obviously it gets harder as you get towards the end of your career and this might be Jack's last year. He kicked 40 goals last year. He's the smartest forward I've seen probably in the last 15 years, the way he uses his body. So, yeah, I think he'll find a way. September expectations rising from one Carlton legend. Hopefully that the pain of the end of last year's home and away season drives them and they can you know, certainly play finals footy and, and get a finals win. I think it'd be a huge step for the footy club. The 10-year finals drought leaving Patrick Cripps with an unwanted record. The only Brownlow winner to have not played a single final in the last 66 years. And confirmation from the Bulldogs that forward Cody Waitman won't face Melbourne Saturday night with his groin injury. North Melbourne coach Alistair Clarkson today breaking the news to number three pick Harry Sheasel. He will debut against West Coast on Saturday after a stellar pre-season. And just finally, Collingwood securing vice-captain Jeremy Howe on a new one-year deal for 2024. Tim? Thanks, Mitch. Still on AFL and Sam Mitchell will give his young Hawks a licence to get physical against the Bombers on Sunday. Players have been involved in two scuffles with teammates over the pre-season, something Mitchell doesn't mind. You look at the very best sides and they've all got a, a bit of edginess about them and um, you know, if our side can create that over the, over the coming weeks and months and years, then that's something that the good teams have and we would like to have in our, when our time comes as well. The coach is yet to decide if he'll bring up the history between the two clubs, including the line in the sand game in 2004. The Aussies are now preparing for a rematch with India after their 2-1 series loss. The fourth test petered out to a draw with Travis Head out for 90. They'll meet again in June's Test Championship final, this time on neutral English turf at the Oval, not the Indian Dust Bowls. It's probably as close as you get to Australia potentially in terms of pace and bounce. Yeah, the guys are, are really pumped by it, really excited. The Aussies are hopeful. Usman Khawaja will be there awaiting scan results on a knee injury he sustained on day four. Mr Brightside remains one of the favourites for the All-Star Mile after drawing barrier two despite star jockey Craig Williams having to give up his ride as he recovers from Saturday's fall. He's ridden 19 consecutive races on Mr Brightside. No one knows him better and um, thoughts are with Craig that he's going to have a speedy recovery. 
uh, but very happy to be legging up Luke Curry. He's, um, he's right now over in Hong Kong, gets the world's best. The $5 million feature race will be live on 7 from Mooney Valley on Saturday. And the American man who revolutionised high jump, Dick Fosbury, has died from lymphoma at the age of 76. Before Fosbury, athletes cleared the bar face forward. But in 1968, he won gold at the Mexico City Olympics by leaping backwards over the bar. He's the first person to try the technique that's universally used today, called the Fosbury flop. Mitch, and that was always my jumper choice. What about you? I was hopeless at it. Thank you very much, Tim. Coming up, the <laughs> high-tech weight loss treatment, helping patients shed kilos and keep them off. The clinic delivering incredible outcomes in just 16 weeks is ahead. Also, Jane Bunn with the forecast. And, Jane, there could be some fog tomorrow. Mitch, it's turning human overnight. We may wait to widespread fog. I'll show you when the sun will return next. <laughs> The rental revolution, ditching big upfront bonds for as little as $36 a year. 7 News with Peter Mitchell at 6. Tonight on the latest from 7 News, expert insight. Will the new AUKUS subs come too little too late to stop a conflict with China? Bali's banning us from what now? The new rule for tourists. And why is our market suffering harder than Wall Street from that bank collapse? When it breaks, we'll have it live at 10.30. Australians scared of surgery but wanting to lose weight can look to a new option in the Battle of the Bulge. A high-tech stomach balloon, which you can swallow by yourself, is now available. It's the greatest balloon trickery since, well, this. In the war on weight, it was exciting. A new world first. I couldn't believe just how little I was eating. A high-tech stomach balloon with no hospital, no anaesthetic, no surgery and no scars. And I couldn't wait. It starts with this capsule on a tiny tube. The trick? Swallow the capsule with the tube intact. When it arrives in the abdomen, the magic begins. The capsule's inflated to grapefruit size, filling 60% of the stomach wall help you learn the feeling of fullness and to reduce your portion size. When the tube comes out, you're good to go. But the balloon stays put for 16 weeks until it dissolves and clears away. I don't want the four months to end. I want it to be in longer. Marcy's had a balloon in her belly since the end of November. From 97 kilograms, she's down to 82. 15 kilos in 15 weeks. Fantastic. The cost? Just over $6,000. And the conclusion? There's no way I'm ever going to get back to that size again. But others say the bubble will eventually burst. We know what happens, the weight tends to go back on. Allurian, the US company behind the balloon, includes six months coaching to help. Uh, just the medium size? Some people don't want surgery. This is simply another option. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Now here's Jane with the weather. Thanks, Mitch. Cloud bubbled up at the end of the day. We have the slight risk of storms in the Melbourne area tonight. At dawn this morning, the sky was stunning while there was a thick fog further east. Tomorrow morning, we're likely to see that fog widespread over Melbourne, like the foggy low cloud earlier today in Warrnambool. Today reached a top of 30.5 in the city as bright sunshine was gradually overtaken by cloud. It was about 25 at the beach, 32 away from the bay. Humid air spreads through this evening, resulting in our fog tomorrow morning. Fairly blue skies have been replaced by a sea of cumulus and it's the ranges, south central and western Gippsland regions that do have the risk of thunderstorms. A cool change has come into the far southwest with a trough. Now the storm action ahead of that trough is much more intense over eastern New South Wales and Queensland with a high and low in through here funneling moist air into the east. The trough dissipates tomorrow and we'll have cold fronts crossing the southern ocean clipping us from time to time. La Nina has a fish come to an end. The Pacific Ocean will gradually stop pushing moist air towards Australia. We're likely to go into the opposite phase this year, El Nino. That pushes moisture away from Australia. It can lead to lighter rainfall, less humid weather than extreme heat next summer and bushfires. Tonight, the weak trough brings the risk of storms to the ranges, south central and western Gippsland. That threat lingers early tomorrow. Heat builds over the north of the state tomorrow, while sun
southern Victoria is milder, then our next spike of heat statewide is due on Saturday. Around the nation tomorrow, the stormy weather generally eases over the east as the trough dissipates. Cold fronts bring only wet weather to the far south, so much of the country is taking a break. A lot of partly cloudy, half sun, half cloud. To Victoria, storms clear western Gippsland early, then generally dry, apart from further storms up on the eastern ranges. However, that trough brings a large area of foggy low cloud over the southwest and central parts that could take until afternoon to completely clear. Closer in after the slight risk of a storm tonight, it turns humid overnight. We could wake to areas of fog, not just near the ranges this time. That lifts a foggy grey cloud for the morning, but then the sun comes out during the afternoon. That's quite pleasant in a light southerly. The city has a grey morning, possibly foggy at first. Sunshine returns in the afternoon, a pleasant top of 26. On the eight-day outlook, Thursday's lovely. I'm expecting 27 in lots of sunshine. A bit cooler on Friday, 24. Some light rain moving through during the morning, afternoon sunshine. The hot one is Saturday, remaining hot at night too. The cool changes due in the early hours of Sunday when we may have some showers passing us through. Foggy grey cloud tomorrow morning, so a gloomy start. But that's ahead of a sunny afternoon. Mitch, pleasant top of 26. Lovely photos from our viewers too. Indeed, tomorrow, lots Jane. of them. Thank you. And that's the way it is this Tuesday, the 14th of March. Thanks for your company. For now, from the 7 News team, good night.